It's the opening frame, Robertson at the table, commentary from Neil Folds and Clive Everton. If he cues this in, he could get out of there up into the middle of the table. But it's not easy. It's very nice queuing. One. And deserves to be on the black. Yes, length of the table, tight on the rail. Didn't have to strain for position. In fact, uh, possibly to his surprise, he may have hit the cue ball slightly too hard for black. Or can he reach the potting angle? Well, he might just put a little bit of left-hand side on this and just very, very gradually bend it around that red. Not too much required, I don't think. Yeah, just a trace of side. As a left-hander, he can at least reach this, but it's not perfect. Eight. Nine. Better shot than it looked, though. Off the cushion, enough for the black. Proper chance now, at last. Patience is a virtue. Seventeen. Interesting shot. I can't believe he played that little cannon. 22. I've assumed it could have gone wrong, but he is on that red at least. So there's no danger here. Can be a little confusing sometimes when the reds are spread like this. You've got so many choices. You can complicate an otherwise fairly straightforward situation. Just pick them off one by one. I'd be surprised if he didn't make quite a few here. 26. 27. So, McLeod's first safety mistake may be fatal as far as this opening frame is concerned. 32. Thirty-three. I'm not sure whether he still is, but Last season, Neil Robertson took to a vegan diet, for which uh, Peter Ebden is a great evangelist. There certainly doesn't seem to be a spare ounce on him. According to Joe Perry, who I spoke to briefly about it yesterday, he certainly still is. And apparently, when they practice on the joining tables, there are many, a few words spoken about it. Apparently, Joe, who's also, I thought, lost a bit of weight, because that's how the subject came up. He said, you've lost weight, so you're not another vegan, are you? He says, absolutely not. But, uh, he says, uh, I get enough of that from, from Neil. He says, and he drives me up the wall. I think it was something like that. All said in a nice way, because they are pals. But apparently he's still a vegan. A couple of others are there. Obviously, Ebden, you've mentioned. Anthony McGill is another one that's uh, now a 41. vegan. Anthony McGill very promising young Scott who ended Mark Selby's world title defence at the Crucible last spring. Ten. 
42. Last word about the vegan diet. It may 44. be that, it may be something else, but many of the top players are always looking for that extra 1%, which might 45. make a difference somehow or other. Yeah, I think nearly certainly somebody in that category. A bit straight on the black, unfortunately. Hard fought break of 45, this with plenty of low value colours. But he's very straight on this. The two reds popped in the same pocket, but he's going to get the screw shot bang on. He's going to play it. Chose a, a different route. The red does pass the pink to the right middle. It is his way 52. of keeping the break alive, and it probably wins him the frame. Leaks his black and one more red. Sixty. So this red is effectively frame ball. Sixty-one. The season before last, Neil Robertson made 103 centuries in competition. He's the only player in the game's history to have made more than 100 centuries in a competitive 68. season. We had to wait a while for something good in this opening frame, but it looks seventy five as if it may end with a century. Seventy six. <coughs> Robertson's made a total of 425 centuries in professional competition. Eighty-two. Eighty-four. It's been a lovely break. The Reds were spread, but he's not really ever looked like missing. Opening red was queuing to roll it in full length of the table, albeit it was fairly close to the pocket. Since then, it's been on everything. No serious alarms. And we're seeing what a good match player he is because 91. he won the tactical battle, and when the chance came, he's cleared the table. 96. Immaculate clearance of 109. 109 Neil Watson frame, Neil leads Robert. Rory McLeod by a frame to nil. Welcome back to the Champion of Champions and the Group 4 match between Neil Robertson and Rory McLeod. Robertson has taken the opening frame. This is now the second. McLeod is at the table. Commentary comes from Clive Everton and Neil Folds. One. Uh, the idea was right, but he double kissed the blue. That was the problem. And the second kiss on the blue has taken the cue ball right up there in no man's land. It's not easy to think that he can keep the break going here. Rory 
Rory McLeod one. Not a very good shot either. And I think despite Neil's previous poor attempt at a snooker, Rory could be in a spot of bother now in behind the brown, his favourite. Maybe an edge sticking out. McLeod one. McLeod's still only 17 behind. And uh, he will be hoping that Robertson leaves him something from this escape. twice across wow. nice try but I think he'll have another powerful. chance to play it better coming up could be three or certainly possibly four cushions this depending on whether he hits the left hand side rail before the red make a very minor adjustment Very good. And of course, making the escape to the underside of the Reds, as we look at them, was the safest way. An escape from the top, as it were, would have had a much greater possibility of leaving a Red on. Just another chance that Roy's left for Neil to chip in behind the yellow and brown, perhaps. That might be his target area of the top red. He played it off the second red to, to shift it, but it was the same idea.
Well, the choice is an ultra thin cut or an attempt to get in behind the brown. Decided on something different. Foul. And a miss. Neil Robertson, four. Not often you see a ball missed altogether at that range. But Robertson decides that uh, he can't make a better shot, he can't make it more difficult for his opponent by playing from the position left. So he puts Cloud back in again from the original position. You can't see it now, anyways. Right now? Yeah. This safety exchange approaching the seven minute mark. We pick up the action, still in frame two. McLeod is at the table. He's closed the gap to Robertson, but is struggling to get over the winning line. That's one intense spectator. This certainly wouldn't qualify as frame of the day, but uh, it counts the same as all the others. I don't know whether the, the black is in the way on the, the two cushion way of hitting that red from the bottom and side cushion. I think it probably is just about in the way. It wouldn't look uh, as if it was a big swerve from that low angle camera we showed you. If he wants to go up and down one cushion, it's not really in the way, the black, but uh, it's not how players would usually play out of a snooker like this, just one cushion. See which way he's going, up and down once or twice in cushions. 
It's horrible. It's a horrible shot. It's just not a natural. <clears throat> oh, that's okay. Pink has come to his rescue, I think, although he's having an anxious look. Can the red pass? It would be maybe via the pink. He might be able to pot it off the pink, but it wouldn't be easy either way. That's what he's looking at, maybe hitting the... I think he could squeeze it in there, but it's very, very tight. Yes, this could go in off the jaw and the pink. Part of the problem that R Rory had with the previous shot, if he pushed it up and the red hadn't bounced as much down the table, it was absolutely safe. Fortunately for him, not only did he get the shot, but he got right behind the pink. And really, I think the frame's over. I think he needs up two, and including the green. Seven. Nine. Wow. Leaving McLeod needing a snooker. And then sixteen. Putting him conclusively out of the frame. Robertson 16. To lead by 30 with only 18 on the table. Which is three snookers. And if he pots the blue, it's two to tie with six point penalties. And that's what he's done. And in fairness, a lot of people people might have conceded there, but I can Five. see where he's coming from, where the black is. It's not the worst place for actually trying to get a snooker in behind. But two of them he needs to tie. And that is going to be tough. He's got to get them, and he's got to miss them. And that is nowhere near. Rory McLeod, five. Barring something extraordinary, Robertson's going to be 2-0 up. Slow progress, but ultimately it's the score that counts. Black has been put into an even better position for snookers now. But of course, McLeod would still have to lay them and Robertson would have to miss them. fruitless search for snookers. Robertson leads by two frames to nil.
Welcome back to the Group 4 match between Neil Robertson and Rory McLeod. Robertson has taken the opening two frames. This is now the third. Robertson ahead, but McLeod is at the table. This cue naturally seems to go to the bottom of the ball, so it's sometimes difficult to, to read Rory how he, he thinks. But uh, I think he's playing some sort of screw shot, maybe back for the black. Uh, he didn't quite get the cannon on the first red that he thought. <laughs> Wanted to pot that as slowly as he could. 16. The more slowly he potted the black, the nearer he was going to be to his next red. But this is still middle distance. Seventeen. He really did get hold of that. Very well cued, actually. McLeod's just picking up a bit of confidence, just finding his feet in this match. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Even with black and the first three colours, he's still going to need blue to clinch the frame. Forty-two. I think he went too low on that cue ball. It never swung across the table as he wanted. I think he got some screw on it. So, unfortunately, end of break. Better signs from him, though. A forty-two break and a ten-point lead. told that uh, we've had problems for some viewers with the quality of our pictures sorry about that <laughs> apparently it's been due to the high winds round here Rory McLeod 42 <laughs> a bit of break Chemi never went on to win the frame from there from his point of view 10 points on the green it's always a deceptive lead it sounds a lot but it means that Roy still needs three colours, but uh, Neil only four. So there really isn't much in it.
good safety from McLeod, but not quite a snooker. I do get the feeling that this frame is going to be won by whoever pots the blue. It's a risky shot to play. Uh, I cannot believe he's played it. <laughs> cannot believe he'd put that near the pocket and risk all for the sake of a snooker. Well, not from that distance anyway. If he'd been right behind it, maybe, but that was just asking for it. Three. The blue is still the problem, though. That may not have been a fatal mistake. Well, it's still a bit of a problem, but not as much. That was a very good cannon. And couldn't really use the cushion. It was a direct shot onto the ball, maybe just a tiny bit of the side rail, but it was very accurately judged. This is still tough, though. Very sweet shot indeed. And he's been this as a left-hander, and this is frame ball. This to put McLeod 3-0 down. <laughs> McLeod made a 40 break in that frame, but uh, a very questionable shot choice in attempting to lay a snooker from distance cost him and Robertson did the necessary to lead by three frames to nil. Welcome back to this Group 4 match between Neil Robertson and Rory McLeod. Robertson is just a frame away from the win as we pick up the action in the fourth. Commentary from Neil Folds and Clive Everton. dangerous shot if you get too close to it without it going in you stick it and, uh, that's what he's done it's the thin one that he's left for Neil but clearly on yeah, he could control it one what a chance to close the match Seven. Well, there's plenty of reds available before we have to worry about going into the little Fourteen. bunch of half a dozen. Fifteen. Thank you. 
Twenty-two. Twenty-three. I think he's a bit straighter than what he would have hoped. There are two reds on the right there. You can see them actually in that shot. they put into the same pocket as the black. I don't really think it's easy to get behind them from that angle. But he's played that fine. That's good. And as Clive said, 30. If he can win this match 4 0. It gives him a nice rest for later. Thirty one. Taking some plant-based food just to keep him going <laughs> for the uh, evening session of best of 11 frames. Maybe hit a few balls on the practice table, have a sit down. Doesn't really want this match to go on an awful lot longer because Rory can uh, grind a player down. So 4 nil is what he wants. Interesting choice of shot, I'm surprised, but it's worked out. Yes, opening the bunch 37. has uh, improved the chances of just finishing 4-0 at this 38. visit. It's difficult to pick many holes in Robertson's 45. performance, in fact. Oh. But that was one of them. Yeah. Neil Robertson, 45. Oh, it didn't sound like a kick. He's still on the thick side. I mean, he's not anywhere near it. Well, quite amazing. Well, I was about to say that he's only missed one easy ball, but that's two. His safety has been good. He made a century in the opening frame. He cleared up the later colours to win the third frame, which McLeod looked likely to win. I suppose the only good news from missing the last shot was that uh, McLeod doesn't have access to the red that Robertson attempted. And it seems that nothing's available to the middle. I did wonder. Uh, well, he's going to drop into them. And, uh, I don't know if he's left a red to the to left middle, but it wasn't the most creative shot I've ever seen played on a snooker table. May not have had anything else on, to be fair. Wow. Yeah, Robertson. Well, that's, uh, absolutely no use to him. It's, uh, I guess if it finishes in the jaws, he's left Neil a difficult one. But if he puts the cue ball close to the yellow, I think he can get through to the red that he missed earlier on, actually, into that pocket. But that's where it finished from that last shot.
looked as if Robertson was heading for victory a few minutes ago until he missed a red at point blank range. And then, as we just saw, he missed a more difficult red at distance. Talking of plants, as was earlier on with the, what he might have to eat later. I think he might have found one on the table here. These two balls look dead in line. Gap between the reds, though. One. No, it's not bad. He can just cue the brown from there. So maybe this will prove to be the winning visit. Five. Six. All credit to Rory McLeod for qualifying for this tournament. Which he did by winning the Ruhr 13. Open, a minor ranking event, with uh, all the top players except Ronnie O'Sullivan in it, although he, he didn't actually have to beat any of them, but he ended up winning it. 14. His place here, and uh, I think he will feel disappointed that he's not shown more of his best game he's missed quite a few easy balls 90 made one or two questionable shot selections 20 one of them disastrous at the end of the last frame and uh, the golfing class between McLeod and Robertson has always been apparent 27 28 Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Forty-three. Forty-four. Fifty one. Fifty three. So Robertson finishing the match with the authority befitting of a world number three. Fifty six. Made a break of a hundred and nine in the opening frame. Finishing off the match in style. Sixty five. Sixty 
71. Positional play by the senior Bruce. So Neil Robertson beats William McLeod by four frames to nil and will play either Sean Murphy or Yan Bing Tao in the group final this evening. A comprehensive